three on Twitch. I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for this segment. So so have I. So me and Okadrian over here are with Michael to talk Shadow of War. Dudes, I am so pumped for this game and dude, <laughs> dude. Like I'm I'm, a, I'm I'm I was a little bit sadly got pushed October, but I will wait for this for this greatness. I mean just seeing what you guys have shown, just the nemesis system upgrade. But but before I jump into this, I have to assume maybe some people out there, maybe like two people out there have not seen Shadow of War, don't know what it is, so Maybe a, a quick briefer on like what you know. Yeah, sure. It's um, show Shadow of War is the sequel to Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor that we released back in 2014, which was amazing. God, and it's amazing. Um, effectively it's kind of bigger and better in pretty much every way. The the story is more epic. The world's enormously larger. The Nemesis system, which was kind of our our core innovation, where enemies remembered you, any enemy in the world, any grunt could rise up to become your ultimate nemesis. Yep. That's been expanded. You can build your own armies now. You can conquer fortresses. So that's amazing. Just to go back to nemesis, nemesis system for a second here. Like, you could go and you could, like, you know, like, beat another general, but they might come back and they're going to remember, like, what you did to them and they will hunt you down. And it's such a great, like, you're building, like, these, like, these nemesis-like style like, relationships and... You know, it's like throughout the game, you just don't know who's going to come back and watch your back, and because they were out for revenge. You guys have just taken that to like the next level. Yep. In Shadow of War, right? So there's more sorts of interactions you can have with them. So, for example, uh, the orcs can have relationships with each other. Right. So if you kill someone and they have a blood brother, he's going to come down and start hunting you through the open world. That's cool. um, even if they can actually earn new titles now. So if you have an orc and he's able to bring down and kill a drake he can become the dragon slayer so they can earn titles and they can grow and they become stronger players. as they do that yep so like could i like potentially foster like these guys that i take over and like recruit and like just make them like just stronger by like you know having them accomplish these feats in the game yeah once you have followers uh you can train them you can send them on missions you can send two of your own followers to fight to the death against each other and whoever is stronger is going to rise up in the ranks oh wow you better you can send them to hunt enemies you can infiltrate and make them into spies so they can stab the war chief in the back. Or if they're a war chief, when you go to a soldier fortress, they can sabotage the fortress for you and help you capture it. That so there's just so many ways you can manipulate this orc society. That is ruthless. So now I have to say, I'm like, so I, I've had the fortune of actually being able to do the same interview like years ago for uh, Shout Out Mordor. And um, the team was just obviously like just very like, you know, dedicated to keeping like within the lore and be like respecting like, you know, Lord of the Rings, is, is that still the same case like here where like everything's kind of being like, you know, like there's the respect to the kind of like, you know, the entire like, you know, history and like world or like, you know, like lore there? Yeah, very much. I mean, our goal with this story is to make something that's this massive, epic, self-contained story of these right. heroes, you know, Talion and Celebrimbor and their rise and this battle for Mordor. Right. But, um, because Mordor's sort of hidden oh from view from the rest. Oh, the yeah. How else the fire is awesome. So just so you guys know, like this isn't like you know B-roll. This isn't pre-recorded. Like we, who's playing back there? Someone's playing. Uh, this. Evan. Evan is Play. back there playing this right now. And Michael's just like, yeah, going to pouring like kick some ass. And and that's what he's doing right now. Like look how like goddamn amazing it's this destructive. is. Destructive. Yeah. Yeah. And that all this thing, the the spreading fire and the destruction and the guys burning, um, that's all added uh, as well for this, this game. So this is actually not a fortress. This is an outpost. Oh, an outpost. Different Sorry outposts about that. Yeah. throughout the open world. Right. And basically, there's orc commanders that are responsible for controlling these outposts. And you need to go and either take down certain troops or destroy or sabotage. And that's going to draw out that commander right. to enable you to either kill him or make him join your army to prepare for assaulting the fortress. Now, is it always better to have them join you? Are there any cases where, like, there's a benefit to, like, just, like, you know what, this guy, I'm just going to choose to end his life right now. I don't want to deal with this guy anymore, like. There's a, a huge benefit to them dying, which is you get loot. Oh. So. Um, and that sounds pretty good to yeah, me. All right. So you've really got that choice. Is what's more valuable to me, this guy as a follower or this, you know, epic loot and gear that I'm going to equip? And what's um, one of the things we've added in relation to the gear, right. if you kill one of these orcs, they're going to drop their gear. Oh. Sorry, I won't Did talk. You it on purpose? I always feel bad talking over. Oh no, sure, orcs, same yeah. here, man. Yeah, I'm glad you caught that. <laughs> but um, uh, and then that gear will come with a challenge, which is like a, a little gameplay challenge. And right. then if you achieve that challenge, that'll unlock more traits or. Um, oh, that gear. Like combo so set, that, gauntlet, yeah, body armor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that makes a new story as well. So if you stealth kill a guy who's good with fire, 
then maybe he's going to drop a dagger. If he was good with fire, that might give you a challenge to burn some guys. You do that, that's going to add fire damage to the dagger if you kill someone who's on fire. And then it unlocks like a little tombstone quote for that orc. So the gear system is actually almost a, a graveyard or a way of immortalizing all of these memorable, cool orcs, unique orcs and enemies that you're going to fight through the game. Wow. So, so like, all, the loot that you get, is it just for you? Or is it, like, can you actually, like, you know, or does that go to, like, your your, your troops as well? Like, how does that kind of, like, work? Uh, the loot's for you. Yeah, loot's and for you. now you can visually customize Talion as well, so. Very cool. And, oh, man. Like, I just imagine just all all the voice acting and all the, like, there must be just a tremendous amount of number of lines in the game. Right? We have been, um, so the writing team's just done an amazing job, you know, bringing the personality to these guys. And then just the technical side of hooking that up. So right. there's all of the, the memories and the dynamic events. And then just the recording. So there's just been recording pretty much solidly for two years. You know, it's just a, a col and in multiple studios, like it's a colossal amount of content. And, but at the same time, I think they've done just an incredible job keeping the quality of that high as well. Right, from the, from the like writing that I saw during like the presentation, it seemed like it was on point. So like, it'll be great that like, I can just play the game the way I want to play. And I hear all these personalities and all these like, you know, like these quips and going back and forth. And I can like maybe hop into OK Adrian's channel, see him play in the game and potentially just see like, you know, completely different conversations yep. or insults or whatever. So and, and even the, the chatter, depending on which tribe, you know, which orc culture is controlling a particular area of Mordor, even the chatter of the grunts and the guys walking around in the oh, world okay. is going to be different and is, is going to reflect. They'll react based well. on where they are, what you've done, and what's going on. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. How many different, like, like orc tribes or clans, like, are there? Uh, initially, there's seven. Right. Um, and they change the fort, the wilderness. They have different roles that come with them. They have unique weapons for each tribe. <laughs> There's too much fun. Over never, there. ever, ex never gets old. Except, what's that fire? Oh. Stop is this, this going to, like, can it, like, break down? Uh, it can just burn. It doesn't oh, actually just get break destroyed. Down. Okay, just making sure that's what, so I don't put my place. So you know, <laughs> evacuate if you go, the uh, the towers, when you're going for the fortress, actually can. Oh, Evan's out of there. Oh. Probably a wise move. Yeah. Do his and own. then, um, oh, that's actually... So those are eggs. So right. there's always opportunities to create more chaos in the sandbox as well. So there's spiders, there's ghouls, there's these massive towering um, growls. Do those discriminate like who they attack? Or does it just attack anybody will attack you what, if you free them? Or is that only going to hit like your enemies? If you just open up the cages, they're going to be indiscriminate. They're going to oh. have chaos. But if you see this guy that's coming in now, right. perfect timing, he was mounted on one of the Karagors. And we didn't have that last time at all. Right. So we now have the orc cavalry as well and they can even actually steal your mount and take off in that as well oh, how many jerks all right mounts do you have available in the game um we have the even. three main well so we have the grouts who are the big sort of uh giant creatures we have the drakes we have the caragors but then different regions can actually have variations and different versions of some of those monsters so they'll have different elemental effects or breath weapons or all sorts of chaos Oh, this guy's actually really putting up a fight. Yeah, that yeah he's not mine. But the battle system, like, was just always just so satisfying. You, you always went in there and you felt like a complete badass. You could choose like what combo you wanted, it, how you wanted to finish it off, how you wanted to kind of like warp in and out. And I mean, it was just always just like an awesome experience. And it looks like you guys have like stayed true to that. Like, any major changes to the battle system, or have you got to? Like, well, look how. Never mind. <laughs> Never this mind. goes Kareem yeah. right off. Oh, nice. Uh, so just here, like, mounted. So he's right. now got the spear when we're mounted as well. So it gives sort of more reach and the, the melee and combat expanded there. You can also do stealth when you're mounted. So you can oh, you creep see you up sneak in. Yeah, and pounce on your enemies. Um, the spear is actually a pretty cool addition to the combat because you can use that when you're in normal melee as well. Because the battles are so much bigger, we've got so many more enemies. So having that ability to kind of clear out uh, is really helpful. And we've added a lot more abilities into the combat tree and the skill right. tree, but we've also added upgrades to every one of those abilities as well so that you can customize it to your own playstyle as well. You're more stealthy, more aggressive, you prefer a combo system. Yeah, if you want to, uh, so if you're more skillful and right. don't get hit, you can build up your might bar fast, just as an example, build your might bar faster to do different execution attacks. Um, if you're not as careful and you just want to play more aggressively, you can set that so you're actually going to build up that might bar by actually getting hit. So you can trade off attack versus defense. And then 
and it's just it's really it's really deep and it was very important for us to do that because we want it to keep growing and expanding and evolving over you know dozens or even hundreds of hours oh. of gameplay so speaking of like the hours of gameplay Ooh. like Ooh. oh womp womp <laughs> have trouble back and i was i was looking at michael there now like in terms of like the sheer size of the game and content how would this compare to like you know uh, like shout mordor like are they about approximately the same size? I remember, like in Shadow of Mordor, you, you had this one huge map, and then you get you get through that, and you're onto like the second huge map, and then it's like you know where you kind of like you know explore the second half of the game. Like, how would yep. you compare like you know Shadow of War compared to the Mordor? So each one of the maps is um, significantly larger than right. those maps, but it's each one of those maps is also a lot more detailed. So whether it's the architecture, the vegetation, the terrain, um, and we have more of them as right. well, of course. And then the maps actually change according to which overlord is in charge and which tribe is in charge. Right. So the just the scale of it and the variety of it is, um, you know, four, five, whatever. Wow. Pick sure. It up oh, yeah. A no, bit. And that is, I'm just it's looking like, for bigger. a sense of like how much like you know, yeah, you know, like grander it is. So that's that's awesome. Yeah. I like the idea of it being more detailed too, because a lot of times you have games that just have a lot of empty space, and you're just spending most of your time navigating and running through it instead of actually utilizing it. So what's he doing right now? Like this looks. Oh, like so more this like is the army screen. So this is the screen where you can go to, and right. you can actually see the different enemies and allies. You can study uh, their strengths and their weaknesses, um, and you can also prepare your squad to assault the fortress or plan your next move. So your spies. You can also see if they're on missions. Some of them have the little bars underneath the icons. Right. So they're actually on missions. They might be hunting down monsters or having a feast or doing an execution. You know, you can have rescue missions for your followers. Do you send them yourself or is that kind of something they do on their own autonomously? It's like, both. You it's can both. Send, them, send them yourself. They can happen autonomously. And then sometimes... One of the, the things that works really well for creating stories as you play is anytime you fail or you die, time's going to move forward and right. evolve. Um, the guy who kills you is going to remember. He's going to level up. But um, also, you know, that, that enables sort of the, the world to evolve around you and you to manipulate it and send them on these missions or follow up these missions. But if you fail, your followers can get captured. Oh, wow. So that can create missions to go and rescue these guys, but then that creates another story because if you don't rescue them and get killed, maybe they're going to betray you and join the other army. Maybe they're going to get pissed off and come back to you. Maybe they'll escape by themselves. Oh, snake. So Shag the Venomous. Oh, wow. All right. She wants to go on some date. So like, let me talk about a cool marketing thing you guys have going on here at E3. So like this morning, uh, I was walking from like one hall of E3 to the other. And you go like, what are we, me and Adrian talking about this, like, you're looking at the banners, we're like, you know, 10 banners in a row for, for Shadow War. Just like different orcs going like, I'll be loyal to you, like, you know, forever. You have my loyalty, I'm with you till the end. And then you walk the other direction on the backs of each of those, like, you betrayed me. Like, I will hunt you down for what you did. And this is like, you know, if you don't, like, take care of, like, your, your generals or your, your troops, they will, like, they will remember. Like, they yep. each, Yeah, that's the key. Nothing will be forgotten. Yeah. Oh man, uh, <laughs> dude, I'm like really hyped for Shadow of War. I really am. I, like last year, I was just hoping there'd be some kind of announcement, and this year, this has been him for an hour and a half. Cool. Yeah, if it just like backstage, just like you're pushing. You don't need to tell me about that, Adrian. <laughs> Come on, man. You're embarrassed. You're embarrassing me, dude. Sorry, man. <laughs> I'm excited. Wait. Yeah, no, Sam. So, where can people go to find out more? Um, the interwebs. There you <laughs> go. So Shadow, Shadow of War, War right? Up. Yeah. Yep, yeah. It's pretty much everywhere. Michael, thank you very much, dude. Absolutely looking forward to the game, thank Adrian. You very much. Thank you, dude. Thanks a and lot, man. Thank you. Guys, we've got more for you. Stay right there.